G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. I am back from my week off. I have been drinking and drinking and drinking, and it's been wonderful. But the whole time I've been thinking about astronomy and astrophotography and getting back to take Mars, which is currently at opposition. And this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, uh, which is about Fire Capture. Fire Capture is a free piece of software. It's written by Torsten Eldelman. Now, Torsten has been crafting this software over the years and supporting it, and I have to say, it is really remarkable software and it is amazing to me that this stuff is free. Uh, so I will be donating $69. Instead of having a sponsor for this video, instead I think we should sponsor Torsten. $69 and 69 cents. Torsten has no idea I'm making this video. Apart from that donation I just made, uh, this will be a complete surprise to him. So let's just freak him out and flood his inbox with 69 cent PayPal donations. Uh, I think this will be a great thing for us as a community to do for him because he's done so much for us. All right. What number are we thinking of? 69, dudes! <gasps> so join me as we take a photo of Mars at opposition together with Fire Capture. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So I am staying at the observatory penthouse to the place called the observatory. There's the uh, Galileo suite. Uh, and this place is incredible. Let me show you around. If you look right over there, there's an actual observatory. Uh, that's the Port Macquarie Astronomical Society uh, space in there. I've been in there once before, they've got a nice meteorite and uh, I believe they had a Mead telescope in there but uh, not, probably not the ideal spot for an observatory there is a lot of uh, street lighting around here and the salt air is something that I have to deal with as well uh, which can really screw up the observing conditions a really great place to visit if you're ever in Port Macquarie uh, yeah, the observatory hotel anyway, I'm back in my happy place now Just like that, we have a live capturing session of Jupiter, even though it's uh, still the day. But let me run through some of the settings and the way I use Fire Capture that really makes life easy for us planetary images. Got my little ASCOM control here so I can move it around, uh, but we can see immediately there are a couple of moons here. So the first thing I want to highlight is the built-in ephemeris. Now this is really cool. If I tick ephemeris up here, we actually get the list of the moons. If I pull down the exposure, I'm not gonna see the moons there, but if I pull it up, I can certainly see them in that view. It gives us an indication of all the angles involved, the focal length involved, uh, and also the moons nearby. So I can see here that Europa is about to hit Jupiter itself. Then we've got Io, Ganymede, and Callisto, which are these three along here. So it's great to have that actually built in. Now this works for all the planets as well. Really handy to have at your fingertips there. So the next point I need to make is the region of interest. Fire Capture, like any good acquisition software, lets you set the region of interest of the ROI area around the planet. So I'm gonna pull Jupiter over here to the corner that I know is nice and dust free. And I'm just gonna draw a little square around it, which automatically lets me set the region of interest. And you'll notice that the frame rate just jumps up there quite quickly. I'm gonna pull the gain down. It's actually not looking too bad tonight. The next point I have to make is about the exposure settings and really just the interface in general. You can see here we have a planet and object select. Now this doesn't just look nice. This is also super useful for retaining your settings for different planets. So 
Jupyter here will put Jupyter in the file name for me at the end and it will store all my data in a folder called Jupyter. You can get quite detailed with the exposure settings too. There are different things like the camera temperature, software gain, auto histogram, you can change the gamma, you can change the exposure time. Uh, we've just hit a cloud here so Jupyter disappeared. Uh, but it really does give you a lot of control over the exposures and remembers all of those settings. So now I've got Jupiter roughly in the middle here. I'll just put it back. Conditions aren't fantastic here, but this will at least illustrate the point. <sighs> In Fire Capture itself, as we acquire, we can hit this auto align. And what that'll do is align the frames in real time. You get these four dots to see how central you are. So I can actually move this down and get those four dots a bit more in the middle, like so. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. And that means that when you go to stack, everything is basically perfectly aligned anyway and ready to go. Uh, and that works really well. Auto align is something I basically have on pretty much all the time. But what's even cooler is this next one. Eventually these red dots will sort of move away and you'll find yourself sitting here at the controls, bouncing it back in so that they are in the middle there. Uh, but this can be automated. Now the first time I hit auto align, it didn't work. That's because there's a trick. The trick is to rotate your camera so that you get a straight on view of the planet. So you can see the planet's horizon. Once that's set up, it will then knock it north, south, east and west. You'll see these little arrows ping red every now and then. And that's when it tries to slew in a certain direction to keep it aligned. Because I've done a meridian flip here, you can see they're going in the wrong direction. So I'm quickly going to go into the settings, go to my guiding and I'm going to flip these. The auto align is putting these red dots back in the center without my intervention whatsoever. And what's great about this is that I no longer have to sit here nudging the planet in. I could leave this going all night. I could do a time lapse, whatever I want. It's automatically sending pulses to the mount in order to keep that planet centered on screen. The other thing I'd like to mention is the filters. Now I can change filters here. There's red. Here's green, here's blue, there's blue, and I have uh, luminance also set up, which is blank. I have no glass in that position at all. On the fifth position, infrared. But that is a pretty cool view. You can probably see the great red spot in infrared just there. So over here in my focus settings, I have the filter set up with slightly different focus positions. So before I started this session, I focused in on red and I copied that focus value to all the other filters. Uh, but they're all different because I don't have par focal filters. There's the focus position down here and you may see this change as I swap filters. If you are a working planetary photographer, this feature set is essential. It means that once you've got everything set up for the night, you can then just flick between them. You may have to adjust focus throughout the night as the temperature changes, but you can save those positions to each filter set and it works like a dream. You can change the way it generates the file names, but the setting that I've set up here is for WinduPOS. Now that means that I can pull any of the stacks that it creates straight into WinduPOS and it basically uses the file name as the metadata. It's got the date, it's got the UTC timestamp, it's got the filter and it's got the planet name. And that makes it super easy when you import these files into WinduPOS. It automatically understands all that metadata and it makes it really easy to stack and derotate the planet quickly. Now that all of this is set up and ready to go, you can probably guess what the next logical step is. And that's auto run. I'll do a run here of one and you'll see it automatically populates this with red, green, and blue. And you can change that to luminance, red, green, or blue, whatever you want there. Uh, I'm putting a delay of 15 seconds between each filter. So I can just see that as it's changed the focus shift, I can correct that shift. Uh, if you've got par focal filters, you can just set this delay to nothing basically. I'll set the limit here to 90 seconds, so it's a 90 second exposure. And I'll start the auto run and it will begin 
recording those videos and go through in sequence. And if we want to, we can set this to do 10 runs of RGB, so you end up with 30 files. Uh, and this is great. Now that we have everything configured, we have auto align going, we've got auto guiding going, so it's never gonna lose that planet. It's got the focus set up for each of the filters and it's locked on and running automatically. Fire Capture has really made this easy for me. It takes a little while to set up and get all the settings exactly the way you want, but the automation you get after this is really fantastic. It takes a lot of the manual work out of the planetary imaging process. You can really focus on what you need to, which is getting these settings correct, getting the histogram correct, getting focus correct, and making sure all your gear is working properly and concentrating on processing. Uh, this really makes the job of acquiring planetary images really easy. Thank you, Torsten. Thank you for watching another thrilling episode of me sitting in front of a computer screen explaining Arcane software to you. Uh, 69's in the chat. Boys, if you have used Fire Capture, or even if you haven't and just want to freak out a stranger with random 69 cent donations, make your donation via the Fire Capture website, which links to their PayPal. I'm really happy with the way Jupiter turned out and Mars is just looking brilliant right now. Thank you for all the comments on my week off. I really did drink too much and eat too much and it was fantastic. Uh, you've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.